So you're American? We don't want you here. Are you surprised? Don't be. As popular as Americans are globally, there are some places you shouldn't visit if you're a US citizen. It's not all sunshine and rainbows everywhere. And for various reasons, some countries have a chilly reception when it comes to rolling out the red carpet for folks from the USA. We'd appreciate it if you could help us reach 5,000 likes on this video, even as we discuss the 10 countries where Americans are not welcome in 2024. Number 10, Myanmar. Starting with Myanmar, as of 2024, this Southeast Asian nation has a population of just under 55 million souls. Myanmar isn't exactly rolling out the welcome drinks for Americans, and there's a bit of history and current events to blame for that. Following the military coup in February 2021, the country has been in turmoil, with civil unrest and armed conflict becoming part of daily life. For Americans considering a visit, it's a maze of visa applications and warnings. The U.S. government advises against travel to Burma due to ongoing issues, including arbitrary enforcement of local laws and limited healthcare resources. Imagine needing a visa that takes a minimum of three working days to process, only to land in a place where you're advised not to travel. Plus, there's the whole issue of the U.S. imposing sanctions on Myanmar, which doesn't exactly make American tourists the most popular guests. Number 9. Yemen Now let's hop over to Yemen, a country with an estimated population of around 30 million. Yemen is another spot where Americans might find the welcome mat a bit dusty. The country has been embroiled in a devastating conflict since 2015, leading to a massive humanitarian crisis. For Americans, the idea of visiting Yemen comes with stern warnings about civil unrest, terrorism, kidnapping, and armed conflict. The U.S. State Department couldn't be clearer with its Do Not Travel advisory. Getting a visa as an American? Good luck! Yemen's strict visa policies, combined with the country's instability, make casual tourism nearly impossible. Even if you did manage to get in, hostility towards Americans due to perceived involvement in the conflict and drone strikes makes it a less than ideal vacation spot. Number 8. Somalia. Next up is Somalia, a country with a population of about 15 million people. Here's where things get a bit dicey for Americans. The frosty reception can be traced back to various factors, including political instability and security concerns. In May 2022, President Joe Biden approved the redeployment of U.S. soldiers to combat the Al-Shabaab insurgents, a move that, while strategic, doesn't make American tourists the most popular guests. The visa process is very stringent. Think of it as trying to thread a needle while riding a roller coaster. Possible, but not without challenges. Hostilities can range from bureaucratic red tape designed to make your stay less than pleasant to outright security risks to your life. It's a tough scene especially considering the humanitarian crisis unfolding there with millions displaced and struggling for food. Not exactly the backdrop for a warm welcome. Number 7. Venezuela Venezuela, home to over 28 million people, has had a strained relationship with the U.S., to put it mildly. Economic sanctions, political spats, and a general air of mistrust have made Venezuela a challenging destination for Americans. As of August 2023, the economic situation has driven over 7.7 .7 million people to leave the country, proof of the dire circumstances many Venezuelans face. For Americans looking to visit, the visa process is a puzzle of its own. It's not just about filling out forms. It's about navigating a system that is inherently skeptical, if not outright hostile, towards Americans. Once inside, the high cost of living and tension can make day-to-day -day interactions feel like walking on eggshells. With approximately 23,000 U.S. citizens living in Venezuela, mostly in the Caracas area, the community is there, but so is the feeling of being unwelcome guests in a house divided by politics and economic hardship. Number 6. Libya Libya is a country that's been through more plot twists than a season of Game of Thrones. As of 2024, Libya has a population of about 7 million people. Now why might an American passport not be the golden ticket here? It's a cocktail of factors. The U.S. Department of State currently has a do not travel advisory for Libya due to various dangers, including crime, terrorism, civil unrest, kidnapping, and armed conflict. The relationship between the U.S. and Libya has been a roller coaster, especially after the 2012 attack on the U.S. mission in Benghazi. This event heightened security concerns, making Libya a tough destination for American travelers. The visa process is super tough. 
Americans looking to explore Libya face stringent requirements, and the fact that the Libyan government doesn't allow entry to passports bearing Israeli stamps adds another layer of complexity. Number 5. Syria. Syria, a country with rich culture and history, has sadly been overshadowed by conflict in recent years, with a population grappling with the realities of civil war. Syria is another spot where Americans might find the welcome mat rolled up. The reasons are similar to Libya, but dial up the intensity. The U.S. has slapped a level 4 travel advisory on Syria, citing risks of terrorism, civil unrest, kidnapping, and armed conflict. The Syrian government's stance towards Americans is hostile due to a complicated geopolitical chess game involving sanctions, military actions, and diplomatic standoffs. The visa process for Americans wanting to step into Syria is like finding a needle in a haystack. The hoops and hurdles in the application process reflect the strained relations between the two countries. If you somehow manage to get in, the environment can be less than welcoming due to the ongoing conflict and general suspicion towards foreigners, particularly Americans, because of the U.S.'s involvement in regional politics. Number 4. Afghanistan when we talk about countries where Americans might not receive a warm welcome, Afghanistan tops many lists for numerous reasons. With a population of about 38 million, this country has been a focal point of geopolitical tensions for decades. Why might an American get the cold shoulder in Afghanistan? For starters, the U.S. Department of State currently recommends that U.S. citizens do not travel to Afghanistan due to terrorism, the risk of wrongful detention, kidnapping, and crime. It's like the country is saying, visit at your own risk, but with a tone that strongly suggests, please don't. The advisory isn't just for show, it's backed by a grim reality where multiple terrorist groups are active, and Americans are prime targets for kidnapping and wrongful detentions. Imagine planning a trip only to find out you're on the most wanted list for a group you've never even heard of. The visa process for Americans wanting to enter Afghanistan is, to put it mildly, daunting. U.S. citizens must have a valid passport and Afghan visa to enter and exit. Those arriving without a valid visa face deportation or confiscation of their passport and heavy fines. If you thought getting a visa on arrival might be your backdoor entry, think again. That process involves letters from the Ministry of Tourism or the Ministry of Information and Culture, and tourist visas are usually single entry, valid for three months with a one-month authorized stay. But let's not paint an entirely bleak picture. The relationship between Afghanistan and the U.S. has layers. Peel back the layers and you'll find a history of diplomatic ties dating back to 1935, with moments of cooperation and mutual support. However, the overarching narrative, especially post-2001 following the U.S. invasion to oust the Taliban and combat al-Qaeda, has been one of tension and conflict. This military involvement aimed at self-defense after the September 11th attacks marked a significant turning point setting the stage for the current advisories against travel. Number 3. Iraq Iraq, with a population hovering around 40 million, has had a tumultuous relationship with the United States to say the least. It all began with the 2003 U.S.-led invasion under the pretext of weapons of mass destruction. Since then, the narrative between the two nations has been complicated. Why aren't Americans welcome? First off, the visa process is like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. Americans can indeed get visas on arrival at airports, but obtaining an exit stamp in your passport can be super tricky. The visa application itself is a marathon, not a sprint. It normally takes around 12 working days to process and requires a valid passport. It's less about welcoming you to Iraq and more about proving why you should be let in. But it's not just the paperwork that can make Americans feel unwelcome. The security situation is like walking a tightrope over a canyon, with reports of government officials employing torture and other inhumane treatments, and the presence of various armed groups. It's a stark reminder that the country is still grappling with stability.
Number 1. North Korea North Korea, officially known as the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, DPRK, has a population of around 25 million people. This country is like that one neighbor who doesn't come out to the block parties but watches everything from their window. The relationship between the US and North Korea has been chaotic to say the least, with decades of political tensions, nuclear threats, and a war that technically hasn't ended since an armistice was signed in 1953. Now, on to the juicy bits. Why are Americans not exactly welcomed with open arms in North Korea? For starters, the US government strongly advises against travel to North Korea due to the serious risk of arrest and long-term detention. Remember Otto Warmbier, an American student who ended up in a coma and later died after being detained in North Korea for allegedly trying to steal a propaganda poster? That incident sent chills down the spine of many and highlighted the extreme risks involved in visiting the country. Getting into North Korea isn't a walk in the park either. Since September 1, 2017, the US has banned its citizens from using their passports to enter North Korea, except under very specific circumstances. This move essentially puts a giant do not enter sign on North Korea for American tourists. Even before this ban, snagging a visa as an American was as tough as getting a straight answer from a politician. You'd have to go through a specialized travel agency and be part of a tightly controlled tour group, always accompanied by a guide who ensures you don't step out of line, literally and figuratively. But let's say you do manage to get in. The experience is unique. There are strict rules about what you can and cannot do, see, or photograph. Want to have a chat with a local? Think again. It's illegal to talk to North Koreans without authorization, and forget about making jokes about the leadership or the country. Those could land you in hot water fast. It's a level of control that's hard for many Americans to fathom, coming from a land where freedom of speech and movement are taken for granted. In essence, visiting North Korea as an American is like walking on eggshells while blindfolded. You're never quite sure if your next step will be your last in terms of freedom. The stringent visa process, the potential for misunderstandings leading to detention, and the overall atmosphere of surveillance make it a challenging destination. Yet, the allure of the forbidden can be tempting for some. But remember, curiosity killed the cat, and in North Korea, there might not be nine lives.